grab your Bible, grab your study notes. Let's go to the word of the Lord. We're going to going to John chapter 13, John chapter 13 and read one verse of scripture. John 13 should be on your study notes. It's on the screen as well. If you don't have your Bible, John chapter 13, verse number 34, a new commandment I give you. That you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also ought to love one another. So I say amen to the reading of God's word. We're going to minister um, tonight. This is part four of our I Love My Church series. This is the final installment. Be the Lord's will. <laughs> final installment of I Love My Church series. Um, tonight from the topic, the truth about love. Amen. The truth. The truth about love, the truth about love. Someone said, and I believe it, and I agree with it, that man's greatest need is to be loved and to be able to show and to give love, to, to show love, to give love, and to receive love. Uh, that, that is really the only reason why you and I are in relationship with God Almighty uh, is because he loved us. Uh, that's the only reason why we're in fellowship with him is because he loved him. Our, our relationship with God is founded on the fact that he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and our, our relationship with God is rooted and grounded in love. And really our relationship with one another should be rooted and grounded in love. And, and this is what Jesus said. Jesus said that this is how people are going to know that you are my disciples. Not by, uh, not by what church you attend, he says, but know that how you show love one towards another. Jesus said the identifying mark and the indicator is not in my tongues. Uh, it's not in how I can know the word from cover to cover. It's not in my hucking and my bucking and my running and my dancing and my leaping and my shouting. All that's good. All that has its place. But Jesus said that people will know that you're my follower, that you're with me whenever it is that we love one another. And if there's anything that our local church needs, if there's anything that our local assembly and the church body as a whole, but I'm, I'm here at Truth and Love Ministries, there's anything that we need to tighten up on, if there's anything that is my heart's desire in my prayers you heard me talking about on Sunday it is us not just uh, going to truth and love but exemplifying truth in love Oh, come on, y'all. I thought you were going to do it better than that. It's not, not, not just going. Can I tell you that love is not just our name, uh, but love is who we are. And lo love should not just be our name, but it should be what we embody. It should be what we embody. Let me go to work because I think I'm going to have to prove it to you tonight. So look at my, my first point. Loving the way that God intends is a matter of the heart. Loving the way that God intends, it is a matter of of the heart. A lot of lot of lot of folk can't love the way that God intends because we have not had that heart transplant that God says that I need. You you can only be a believer, a true and a genuine believer if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior and God has did that regeneration. He done that work in you. Here's something uh something happens that's not at the naked eye. You cannot see it tangibly, but it's something that happens on the inside. Grandma said it like this that something on the inside begins to work on the outside. Come on, it, it, It's something that God does on the inside of us. And here loving the way that God intends, it, it's a matter of a heart. That's why we should not be so hard and be so critical on people who are not saved. Because the only way I'm living according to the word, the, way, the will, and the way of God is because God has did a work in my heart. Before I got saved, I didn't care about what you did. I didn't care how you did it. Just don't bother me. I'm going to live my life. This is what I thought I, I, I grew up in church and I felt as if long as I didn't steal, I still stole. Long as I didn't steal, long as I didn't kill nobody, I was on my way to a stairway to heaven. Come on, I was going step by, ain't that the gospel song? I was on my way to heaven. I, I, anybody believe that or thought that? Long as you didn't bother nobody, you was a good person and you was going to be all right. But no, my friend, it's more than just being a good person. It's more than just not doing this and doing that. And the only way I can live according to God's word 
word, God's will and God's way, is because he did something in my heart. It's a matter of the heart. That's the only way that I can love God's way. So how does this happen? What, what takes place? Let's look. Let's look at this. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse, verse 25. Tonight, we're just going to talk about the truth about love. Let, let, let's see how God does this. Let's see how this is a matter of the heart. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36, 25 says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you verse 26 says and I will give you a new heart I'm, I'm gonna give you a new heart so God says that this is what this, this describes regeneration this 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 describes transformation this this describes the new birth that God said I'm gonna sprinkle the clean water upon us the, the water we know is the word of God it's the word of God that washes us if you're taking notes and you should because I gave you the handout so you should be taking notes so if you, if you, if you want to write something down another verse of scripture would be St. John chapter 15 John 15 verse 3 Jesus says now you are clean by the word that I have spoken unto you. Another verse of scripture that we covered on Sunday, Ephesians 5, 26 says that we're washed by the sanctifying of the washing of the word. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God. So it is the word of God that cleanses. I can't get cleaned up apart from the word of God. I can't get a new heart apart from the word of God. It takes the word of God, my friend. He said, when I sprinkle that clean water upon you and I'll give you that new heart. Verse 26 says, not only that I'll give you a new heart, I'll give you a new spirit and I'll put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27 says, now I will put my spirit within you. Here it is. How, how, is, how am I going to exemplify this love? How am I going to walk this love out? He says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you, come on, this is Bible study. Let me, let's walk through this together. Let's read this part of the verse together. Verse 27, and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rule. Look, look at it. This is how, this is the truth about love. This is how I can love the way that God intends me to love because he put his spirit in me that causes me to walk after his word. And this is why people who are not saved and people who are not regenerated, people don't know God, they can't live the way we live and do what we do. Come on somebody, anybody gonna be honest with me? You barely doing what you're supposed to be doing. And here we looking at folk that's not doing and saying, oh, how could you? How dare you? But the only way we can do this is with the Spirit of God. John 16, 13 says, how be it when he has come, the Spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. He said, I'm going to give you my Spirit that's going to make you walk according to my word. What are you trying to say, bro, Pastor? So glad you asked. I'm trying to tell you that if I'm a child of God, God has given me everything I need to walk according to his word. You can't say you don't have what it is that it takes in order for you to exemplify the love that God says that you ought to exemplify and we're supposed to exemplify because I have received everything that I need. Let me go further. Let me go further. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. You know this scripture. Look what it says. Therefore, because of this, he says, if anyone is in Christ, he is being worked on. He is still a man. <laughs> The Lord knows his heart. Oh, what, 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 what all that stuff we say? No, he, the Bible said, he is a what? New creature. Here it is. The old, he, but, 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 this how, but this is how I am. The old, but this is how my mom and them was. But the old, the old has done what? Pass away, and behold, the new has come. Good God. I, I See, I'm the same. I look the same, but I'm different. Yes, sir. The Lord, the Lord had did something on the inside of me when, I, when I'm a new creature. He done something. The old has passed away. My old character, my old nature. And this is why Paul says in Romans 12 that I am to be renewed by the, I am to be transformed rather by the renewing of my what? My mind. See, I got to live this thing. And when I come into the family of God, he begins to regenerate me, begins to, to work on me, begin to pull those things out of me, and I become a new creature. This is the way I can exemplify the love that God intends me to exemplify because it's a matter of the heart. Matter of heart. Let's keep going. Anybody mind me teaching? I'm just teaching tonight. Y'all mind this? Look, look at look at look at first Peter, first Peter 1 3. I'm a teacher, preacher, treacher, uh, treach, treacher. Look at look at first Peter. One three says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, look at this, he has caused us to be what? 
born again. Lord, have mercy. Call us to be born again. Maybe, maybe you were born. I, I, I'm careful to say, and I don't want to know. No, please don't send me no email. Got any emails? Send them to ladyc.truthandlovejacks at gmail.com. I don't want no emails, but I, I'm real careful on saying uh, what a person isn't born with. Because sin, we're all born and shaping in sin. Nobody, I didn't go to, uh, I didn't teach any, I got three daughters, and I didn't teach, I didn't take none of them to how to lie class. Come on, you, they come with, with the boo-boo in their diaper, and you say, who did it? They did it. Come on, y'all ain't gonna talk. Oh, y'all little, y'all little woogie boogie don't never, never told a lie. No, y'all little boogie boogie pan. No, they, they come out lying. They know how to lie. They know how to steal. They say, mine, mine. Come on. You don't teach, you don't, I don't have to teach, you don't have to teach a person how to sin is all I'm saying. So if we were shaping in sin and we were shaping iniquity just like I can be, I can have a uh, certain type of proclivity or certain things that's in my genes, a generational curse been passed down to me and maybe I was born with whatever it is that I have. But that's why, my friend, we got to be born. Again. Preach to me. Come on here. We got to be born again. I'm real careful. Don't send me no email. Come on. I don't feel like don't send me no email. It's the lady see dot truth and love. Send an email. What, what, what am I saying? I'm careful to say what, what a person isn't born with because here is sin. Sin is passed down to us all. And here my Bible tells me that the power is not in my original birth. The power is not in my natural birth. But the power is in me born, being born, being born, be, 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 being born, being born. Again, Peter said that by God's grace and his mercy, I've been born again. Look what he said. He said again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look what he says in verse 23. Since you have been what? Born again. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. Look at this. Through the living and abiding word of God. I've been born again. And this work that God has did in me, this work that God is doing on me, this work that God is working on the inside of my heart is doing something in me that pays eternal dividends. Yes, sir. The work that God is doing in my life. I'm so much of a new creature. I'm so much of a new species. I'm so, so much things that pass away. So many other things that become brand new. So much to the point to where God is continually taking me to the place that he desires me to be and now what I normally could not do now God gives me the power he gives me the ability to be able to do things I couldn't do when I was messy when I was petty when I did talk behind your back when you did walk out the room I sucked my teeth and rolled my eyes but now God has put his super on my natural and the things I used to do oh come on here somebody now I got the power now I got the ability not to do it come on somebody I was a I was a rogue is something. I was a thief and something. I stole and I didn't have to steal. Come on here, somebody said, go to Win dixie just steal batteries. Go in the bathroom. Come on, I ain't trying to get my trade secrets, but yeah, go in the bathroom in the bath, act like I'm sitting on the toilet, be taking everything. Come on, y'all ain't never did just sitting in the bathroom with somebody coming in and just putting it in my socks and doing all come on, candy, whatever I need to do. Oh, I was a kleptomaniac. I didn't even have to take it, but I would take it. Oh, but he touched me. Come on here, somebody. Oh, but now, come on, somebody. God have done a work in me so that way I'm not afraid about giving you my testimony because that's what I used to do. I'm not afraid to tell you what I used to watch and what I used to go and how I used to be nasty oh because that's what I used to oh but because a change oh a wonderful change has taken over me come on I, will, I wish the praise team was here because they'll sing a wonderful change I don't need y'all has come oh oh me. Come on, y'all go talk to me. The Lord has done a change. He, am I by myself? Is he did a change? Don't look at me like that in that tone of voice. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's a noise to you, but it's joyful to him. Look, look. Anybody, has he changed anybody? Has he changed anybody? Yeah, yeah. He changed me. No, I'm not going to testify too much because I want y'all to come back Sunday. I ain't going to testify too much. That's all. That's all I'm going to testify tonight. Look, <laughs> look at Romans, Romans 2, 29. Look what it says. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the what? It's a, it's a matter of the heart. In order for me to exemplify the love that God wants me to exemplify, it's a matter of, of the heart. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It says, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This light has shined in darkness. That's all I'm saying, that God has done something in us. For Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near with a what? 
true heart, full of sure and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. If, 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 if I'm talking about the truth about love, and all I'm trying to say is when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, he does such a work in us and through us that here I can love the way that he intends me to love. Let me keep building my case. Let me keep building my case. Look at my second point. Loving the way that God intends is a matter of pursuing. Mm -hmm. See, see, some of us <laughs> get stuck at the altar. What, what I mean, stuck at the altar. Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Save my soul. Baptize me. Baptize me. Fill me. Fill me with the Holy. We get stuck at the altar. You ask the Lord to help you. You ask the Lord to come into your heart. You ask the Lord to do a work in you. But my friend, it's not going to come by divine osmosis. Come on here. <laughs> it's not going to just happen just because it's happened. No, my friend, there, there is some pursuing. That there, There's something that we need to do. Y'all think I'm messing up. when Y'all think I'm making this up. Think I'm talking about works righteousness. No, my friend, I don't work to get saved. But after I get saved, I have to do some work. Come on. So look, look, at, what, look at what Paul said. Paul bailed me out. Paul bailed me out. Look at 2 Timothy 2, 22. It's a matter of pursuing. Look what it says. So, so flee youthful passions. I, I love the King James. I should have used that. It says flee. It says, it says flee youthful lust flee, flee from it run you better run for you better run well if the, if the lord didn't want me to do it he wouldn't have let it come my way if, if, if the lord didn't obviously the lord wanted me to go there and do that if he wouldn't have let it happen because he's in charge he could stop what he wants to stop no the bible says every now and then you got to put on your running shoes every now and then you got to run every now and then you got to stop answering the phone you know what's gonna happen you know what happened last time they came over there and had a y'all had a bible study you know what happened last time they came on and y'all were just going to pray. Y'all were just going to Netflix no chill. All right. You knew it's going to happen. Like, there's some things that you can do. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's all just the people online. Nobody here. Just y'all online. You know, you know, there's some things that there's some things that we, there's some things that we can do. Paul says we got to flee from youthful passions. And here it is. Let's read this part together. And what? Pursue. Right, right. I got to pursue it. It's not just going to happen by default. You got to pursue it, but it's hard. I'm an introvert. I just don't like people. I just don't like being around folks. I don't like talking to people. Well, my friend, you, you a believer now. Come on. All, all that was cool in the game before, before you came into the body of Christ. And this is something that you have to pursue. This is something that you have to work on. This is something that we have to do as a local church. Come on, my friend. If there's, is there going to be hope anywhere, the hope needs to be found in the house of God. If there's going to be joy in the where, come on, joy needs to be found where? In the house of God. If there's going to be loveliness and, and peace and pleasantry, it's got to be found in, in the house of God. This is something I got to work on. I got, I got to work on. Uh, Y'all got, got still making me work hard. It's okay, though. It's okay. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just tell you something I already told you, but I'm going to tell you again so I can tell you. Look, look, that's what good preaching is. I, I read a stat before it said that people forget 21. They only, they only remember 21% of what you say. Lord said, Lord, I preach for a whole hour, and they only remember 20. So I, I, start, I started repeating myself. I said, let me, how many times I can saute this thing? How many times I can, I can, I can bake it? Come on. I, how many times I can fry? I wish, I wish Forrest Gump was here. He'd tell you all them different ways you can have them swim. And that's all I keep giving, the same thing I've already told you. I'm just telling again so it can stick to your ribs. So let me tell you what I told you already so I can tell you. Look, look, look what it says. The truth in love way is that we are always striving to become a friendlier. Look at that. They laughing at it. Friendlier. A friendlier church than we were yesterday. No, oh, ain't nobody said nothing. Lord, what, 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 what am I? What am I? What are you? What are you? What are you doing, Pastor? I, I'm t trying to tell you the truth about love. I'm trying to tell you that in order for us to do it, it's a matter of the heart. In order for us to be that, in order for us to become that, it takes a pursuing. And in order for us to exemplify, in order for us to be the local church that God wants us to be, we're still in the I Love My Church series, right? Don't y'all love y'all church? And in order, if you want somebody to love your church the way you love your church, come on, we got to work on being friendlier. We got to work on being, a, have a culture that where we're, where we're welcoming and we're doing what we need to do. And this only comes by regeneration. It's 
only comes by the new birth. This only comes when we're born from above. This only comes whenever it is that we allow God. Because when God comes in our heart, when, in times past, we didn't care about being friendly. I was who I was. I do my thing. You do your thing. I do my thing. But now because I'm a new creature, God gives me new passions. God gives me new desires. God gives me new aspirations. And my prayer is, God, I want to love what you love. I want to be madly in love with what you in love with. Come on, can I be honest with you? I've told y'all before, I, I thought the Bible was boring. I didn't understand why they were dancing for 30 years off the same scripture. And I said, God, give me that hunger. Give me that desire. i never forget Mother Bright would stand up in service and she'll blow the Lord kisses and say she loved the Lord. She would say, I love, I love God. And I would say, God, I don't feel that. I don't love you. I know I'm supposed to serve you. I know I'm not supposed to sin, but I don't love you like that. I said, God, give me that kind of love. Give me that type of appetite. Oh, my Bible tell me, Matthew 5, 6 said, blessed is he that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for he shall be filled. And can I tell you, the Lord gave me a hunger for his word. He gave me a hunger for his presence. And now I can blow the Lord some kisses and say, I love you, God. I worship you. I adore you. I magnify you. Oh, come on here, somebody. You know what? Because I had to pursue the things of God. And if you want, if you want to be the people of God and do what God has called us to do, we got to pursue to be in the presence of God and be associated with God. You, you, know, you know, God describes his people, he describes his people by love. Yeah, yeah, he do. He described, look, look, look at this verse of scripture, look at Romans 8, 28. You know this verse, you only, you only use it for one, one portion, I'm sure. But look at it, he got another part of the verse, look what it says. And we know that for those who, what, love God. Let's stop there. This is how he identifies us. He identifies us with those who love God. But this is not a one way. There's a lot of folk, good God, and we'll see in a moment. There's a lot of folk that love God but can't stand people. Yeah. Yeah, just people online. Oh, y'all love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Just folk on. There's people, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. A lot of folk love the Lord. You'll cry. You worship. You praise. You pray. You do whatever. You get right up and say, hmm. Hmm. Love God, but can't stand people. I feel that right over in <laughs> online. Look, <laughs> but you, you can't be in love with God and not love what he loves. See, we love this verse. Look at verse 28. It's still on the screen. Thank you so much, screen people. It's still up there. For, for we know those who love God. Come on, we love this. All things. <laughs> hey, shata. Work together for good. Yes, sir. For those who are called <laughs> according to his purpose. Mm, 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 dun, dun, dun. We love that, but but what, what's his purpose? His purpose is to win. His purpose is to draw. His purpose is to let my light be a testimony. His purpose is to let my light so shine and let my life be so live. Oh, the way he'll get the glory and he'll get the honor. So this love is a, it's more than a one-way love towards God. No, my friend, but no, it, it has a God's perspective and it has man's perspective. I, I am to love. I am to love. But I hear y'all. I hear you. Well, I'm just not that kind of person. I just don't do all that. I just don't know I just, leave. just let me stay in my little bubble. Let me stay in my little fish hole, and I'm gonna be all right. I got, I got, I got something for you. Cause you don't think you can do it. You don't think you don't think you can do it. I started asking you to raise your hand. If you don't think you can do it. I ain't gonna ask you to do that. Look, look at Galatians 5:22. Look what the Bible says. But the fruit of the spirit is love. <laughs> 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 Anybody see that? <laughs> love. So let me break this down for you real quick. Come on, y'all, the smart class. Y'all, the smart class. I got this already. So if I receive the Lord's spirit, he's given me the fruit of the spirit. It's one fruit. It's not the fruits. It's the fruit. So when I receive the spirit, I get the fruit. So I get all of this fruit. The love, the joy, the, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness. And all of the other does. It's all encompassed. And God will bless you with all of that. <laughs> yes, he will. I, get, I got the fruit of the Spirit. So, so now, I'll be honest with you, maybe there's some fruit. Set. There's some fruit on my tree that's a little underdeveloped. There's some fruit on my tree that's not as mature as others. Can I, can I tell you one? Let me just be honest with you. That patience one. That one, right, that one, that one right. That patience. I, I, you, you know, when I wanted it, I wanted it yesterday. 
Come on, I'm always, I'm already, I'm on go. I'm all out, I'm ready and set. I just need to hear go. Come on, pa- patience is mine. You just got to get in where you fit in. But maybe since the Lord Himself put this, put this message in our heart and our mind, maybe, man, just maybe. There's, there's people online that fruit is love. Hey, boy, I heard somebody. It was so quiet. I heard somebody at Dollar General ask if they have any more bleach in the back. I promise you, it got so quiet. Somebody said, "We got any more bleach back there?" I'm, yeah, yeah hold, they coming. They coming, man. They coming. Look, uh, <laughs> so you can't say <laughs> that you can't love. You can't exemplify love because if, if it's either one or the two, and I want you to see what side of the fence you on. Either, <laughs> either you don't have the spirit of God. So if you don't have the spirit of God, Romans 8, 8 says, if I have not the spirit of God, I'm none of his. So either I'm not a child of God or either I have the fruit, but I don't want to do the work to work on it. It's one of the two. Either you don't have it, either you're not saved for real. You know you can go to church for years and not be saved. I'll never forget one of the most powerful testimonies I ever got. When I've been pastoring in church, a woman said, came to my office crying her eyes out. She said, Pastor, I, I, my God, I've been, I've been going to church for 30 years thinking I was saved. Thinking I was born again and I wasn't. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Going to church, tithing and giving on this board and that board and on this choir and that choir. Doing all this stuff. T- taking the church bus to hell. So it's either one of the two, because you know you can be religious and just come to church. Uh-huh. Coming to church makes me no more of a Christian than sticking my head in the oven makes my head a biscuit. Come on, that's because I stick my head in the oven. I don't mean I'm a biscuit. Amen. Coming to church don't make me don't make me a Christian. It's funny to me every time I say it. So y'all y'all try to start talking to the same people every week and say you, you tell the same jokes. You're like I heard that pastor. Well you you well you well you send me some jokes. So yeah, give me some pastoral privilege. Give me some courtesy laughs. Come on, you give me some courtesy laughs. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Give me some courtesy laughs. Yeah. Y'all be so hard on the preacher. Lord have mercy. Let me get out of here. Look. Now y'all want to laugh. You should you like 20 seconds late. <laughs> y'all want to laugh? No, y'all, let's see if y'all keep laughing. Look, look, look at 1 John 4, 7. Look, look. <laughs> look what it says. Look what John says. Beloved, here it is. Let's read this together. Come on, come on, class. Let us love one another. For God, anybody see that? For, make sure y'all paying attention. Let's read it again. Come on, start over. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Does your Bible still say that? I am to love one another. He's calling us to love one another because God is love. Look at verse 8. It says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Truth in love, love is more than just our name. Love is who we are. I told y'all tonight, I pulled together all of our ministry workers. I call it strengthening the core. I pulled all our core together. And I said, one thing we got to work on this year, as we always have targets. Uh, a few years ago, it was men, men, marriages, and millennials. And then it was this, and then it was that. But this year, I want to develop a culture of friendliness and a culture of love that where we're not just walking this thing out or acting as if we're somewhere that we're not. We don't want that superficial, hypocritical type of love. We want to exude the love of Jesus Christ. Anybody with me on that? Come on, give them some praise if you're with me on that. <clears throat> so let me tell you something I already told you. Let me hurry. Let me tell you what I told you. Look, look. The love, the, the, the truth and love way is that we are always striving to create and what? Maintain a culture of love. This is, this is, how, we, this is how we do it at Truth and Love. We're always striving to create and maintain. It's one thing to create, as I said, son. It's one thing to create. It's a whole nother ball game to maintain. It's one thing to say. I, I, I told y'all before. Vision. It, it, vi- vision is what's on the wall. We can put up as many posters, and we got we got six posters on the wall. A uh, year of this, and year of that, year of this, and year of that. Got all this. What we gonna do? What we gonna build? What we gonna buy? But that's vi- that's stuff that we put on the wall. Talk about what we gonna do. Vision is on the wall, but it's culture. What's in the hall? 
come on, culture is what you feel. Have you ever walked in somebody's house and you felt a little tension? You'd be like, man, what, they've been arguing or something? Have you ever walked in somebody's house and maybe you felt like, maybe I shouldn't have stopped by? Come on, you can feel tension. You can feel whenever a culture is not right. I love it when I walk in the mold. They say, welcome to the mold. Come on, even they don't want me there. Come on, they still welcome me and I feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I love when I go to Chick-fil-A and they take my money and say, my pleasure. I love that. Even if there's not my pleasure, they make me feel good by spending my money. But there's some other places I go, come on, I'm mad giving them that $20. Walk in the door. This is how they speak. That's it. Come on. There ain't even no good morning, no good afternoon. No, they, this is come on, that's one place I'll tell y'all about old 103rd. I ain't going to tell you who it is or where is that. I'm 103rd. That lady so mean. But that food's so good. Good God Almighty. That, that, that lady so mean, I don't know what, the, I don't even know what, I don't know what, I don't know who be making her mad. That lady so mean, but that food be so good. Lord have mercy. I'll go all the way over there to get, to get mad. Because y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> it's one thing to create the culture. It's another thing to do what? To maintain, to maintain. We got to maintain the culture. Let me hurry, y'all, because I'm boring, y'all. Look what Jesus said. This is how we maintain it. John 13, 34, once again, he said, the new commandment I give you. Well, is it really new? He told us this in the law. He's told us this per- previously. Is it new? You know why it's new? Because they wasn't doing it. <laughs> you know why it was new? Because the disciples were stuck on themselves. They were sitting there. You'll see in the moment they were sitting there arguing about who was this and arguing about who was this. And here Jesus said, I'm going to tell you what I already told you. He said, I want you to love one another just as I have loved you. He says, you also are to love one another. He's told them this, but he has to maintain what he told them. The truth and love way is that we are always striving to be more welcoming than we were yesterday. You know, one of the knocks on the local church is they say we're so judgmental. You know, one of the knocks on the local church is they say that we're always talking about what, what people are and where they are. And then we, we, we have standards as it relates to the word of God. We ought not to water down the word of God. And we, we should never have, to, never have to compromise. But we also have to learn how to welcome what we don't endorse. We also have to learn how to welcome without affirming. I don't have to affirm what you in for me to welcome you. Come on, Jesus said, come unto me all that are heavy laden, all that, that come on, all that, uh, that are in need of rest. And he said, I'll give you what you need. And this is what we're trying to birth and inject into the DNA of our local church, that we are more welcoming. We're trying to be more welcoming than we were today. If you see somebody you don't know, if you see a face that you don't know, what is it about being welcoming? What, what is it about people? I, I love it because it happens all the time. People will go through, nobody's going to tell the truth, but I will tell the truth. People will be so excited about going through connection class. They say, let me go through connection class. I need to get my certificate and I want to start getting working in ministry. They'll go through connection class, then they'll get on the ministry, and then next thing you know they're gone. You want to know why they're gone? Because they bumped into us. Y- y'all can't cut the mic off right in the middle of when I'm talking like that. <laughs> you know why they're gone? Because they ran into one. Nobody want to be honest. Though. You'd be so excited. They'd be so happy. I just love the church. I just love it. I just love it. I just love it. I love it. Then we turn them loose. Yeah, they bump into someone who's not welcoming. They run into a clique. They run into a little bit of a little, a little group of people who, mm, what she, who she thinks she is, what he think he finna do. It don't happen here. That's bedside Baptist. That's householdness. It'll never happen here. But 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 listen, you all. We have to be intentional. Am I too? Do I know what I'm talking about. Am I just up here whistling? Today? We have to we have to have develop a culture that where we're welcoming. And then when we see new people come in, when we see people that are that that that, that are going down the same path that I had to come down myself, I need to reach out to these individuals. Let me let me hurry up. I'm boring y'all for real tonight. Lord have mercy. Let, let me. I thought, thought y'all was gonna be flipping over them blue chairs on this stuff tonight. It's like y'all figuring out who we are. Truth and love. But boy, y'all, yes sir. All right. Look at verse 35. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. Isn't that powerful? Jesus said, they'll know you're with me if you have love for one another. L- listen to this. This is so powerful. Listen to this. Listen to me closely. If you, went, if you sleep, wake up and then get this and then go back to sleep. Listen to this. This is good. <laughs> Jesus did not say that the world will know you based off your love for me. Off of my, based off my love for him. See, we, what we like to do is, they don't know I'm with him because I love God. Y'all missed it. 
He didn't say that I'll be identified. The world will know who I am based off my love for him, my love for God. But no, he said the world will know who I am based off my love for one another. And this is how we miss it. This is how the devil dupe us. This is how the devil have us going around in circles over and over because he have us chasing after God and walking past people. This is how we miss it. I got Bible for you. I got Bible for you. Y'all don't think I got Bible. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus says, have faith in God. He goes on and he says, if, if any one of you, Lord have mercy, I wish I had me a reader. I give me a reader. Read. Uh huh. Let me get. Let me. Let me turn my Bible right here. Mark. Mark. Y'all ain't never. Uh huh. Read. Read. What, what it say? Uh huh. Look. Look. Look at. Look at. Look at Mark. Mark eleven, twenty. 24. Let me read it there. There, there it is. Mark 11, 24. It says, that's why you got to bring your Bible because I, I don't got it on the screen. You got to get it. Look, therefore I tell you, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. Ha, shout out. And it will be yours. I believe it. I'm a naming and claiming and blabbing and grabbing and calling and hauling. But you got to read another verse. Read on, sir. Look at verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, naming and claiming and blabbing and grabbing and calling and hauling, he say, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespass. In other words, God say, stop talking to me and go talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't like that kind of reason, but that's the truth. Uh, this is how we miss it. He said, John 13, 35, he said, this is how people will identify who, who you are when you love one another. So to that end, the truth and love way is that we are committed to consistently Showing love. We, 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 we're, we're committed to consistently showing love. I've given y'all this already several times, but now I'm slick and I'm giving it to you on paper so you can go home and study it and, and get it in your heart. I've, I've given it to you because I, I know you, it was, it was so going so fast on the screen, y'all couldn't write it down. But now, now you can write it down and go and marinate on it. Because this is the truth and love way. We're, we're committed to consistently doing what? Showing, showing, showing love. Let, let, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Keep building the case. Look at First Corinthians thirteen one, says, "If I speak in tongues, the tongue in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, look what Paul says, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal." Paul, Paul says that when I don't exemplify love. All my tongues and all the things that I do is just noise. How irritating is that? How bothersome is that? And you, and you just keep doing it and keep doing it. But I'm trying to make a point. That's what Paul says. He says, when I don't have any love, that's all my worship is. That's all my praise because here, when I'm not exemplifying what it is that I'm supposed to be embodying, it's just noise. And instead of, be, if instead of it being something that's attracting, look, look at my point. When we don't love the way that God intends, we are being a repellent instead of being magnetic. Preach, Pastor Kobe. Lord have mercy. And when, when I'm not loving the way that God intended me to love, I'm just being a repellent. Nobody wants to hear that all day. Nobody want to hear about you. You come here, Dan, Dan, you always talking about what the Lord doing and what God finna do this, God finna do that. And you mean it in nine junkyard dogs. They going to try to figure out what church you go to. So I don't go there. That's a repellent. Come on, y'all. But instead of being magnetic, oh, come on, y'all. Lord have mercy. I'm being, di I'm disgusting. I'm being, di I'm being distasteful. I'm being repulsive is what Paul is saying. When I don't show, when I don't show love. Look at verse 2. He says, if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and, and, I, have, and I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, what did he say? I am I, I'm nothing. So you got all the faith in the world. Verse 3, he says, if I, if I give away all I have and I deliver up my body to be burnt, but not have love, but not have, but, but have not love, what did he say? I gain. I gain. I gain nothing. Am I making sense to anybody? I, I, I'm trying to give you the truth <laughs> about love, about the truth about love. And this is what God is saying, that you all, our, 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 our <laughs> good God. We don't want our worship to be religious activity at best. We don't want our worship just to be something that we do. But we want it to be who we are. 
and when it's who we are, I believe that the gospel and my worship ought to affect every area of my life. I believe that I believe it shouldn't just be the church me, but my, my fathering should be different. My, my me being a husband should be different. Me being a good steward of what God has given. Everything in my life ought to be ought to be different, ought to be better. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. As a local church, here's a point I want to give you. As a local church, being nice is an organizational advantage. <laughs> we, you know, uh, this is gonna make so much sense. It makes so much sense to me. We can't have the best facilities because we don't have the best facilities. This is a pool play. We don't have the nicest parking lot. We don't have the, the decked out restrooms. We don't have the, the top of the line equipment. We don't have the best preaching. We don't have the best singing. We don't have the best of this, the best of that. We may not have the best of none of that. But boy, if we be nice. Come on, y'all can't talk to me here. Can, can, can I tell you, you, you may not have the best of anything, but if we can be not, if we can be warm, if we can be welcoming, if we can, if we can learn how to how to exude and how to show love, can I tell you, it's an advantage. I've been to some mean churches with them people standing on the door with them stars on. Come on, looking like the U.S. Marshal. Come on, they, they, they won't let me come in. We got them gloves on, and they looking at me, like, and they, they doing like this. I just put some gum in my mouth. Come on, so because I won't have the hot mouth, so I won't be the hot how you doing? Come on, so can I please slay this dragon breath I got? And they stand there. And like, mm. Come on, I've been, I've been in them church. Come on here. I, I, I've told y'all before, I was at a church. I went to go hear my friend preach, and he, he was preaching. I was trying to surprise him. There was in a time of prayer. I came in right before service started, and I got down, I got down on, I got down at, at the chair, and I was down praying. And we praying. It's an intercession. I'm praying. I'm praying like we were tonight. Praying, praying, praying. And all of a sudden, I feel something on my back. And I'm like, oh, Lord, touch me one more time, Lord, with your spirit. Yes, Lord. Is it I? You know, uh, uh, uh. I looked up. She said, excuse me, this is my seat. I said, I'm talking to God. And you're going to interrupt me from talking to the king of kings to get out your seat? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Oh, don't y'all look at me, that tone of voice online, because y'all do the same thing. Come on. This is my seat. I can't, as I need a, come on, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here. Look at that. Oh, that's, I see y'all. Go, 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 scroll. I see y'all. I never in my life be a part of that church. You, you that mean to stop me from praying to get out your seat. Come on, somebody. That, that's, that's a trip, isn't it? We got, I got some better stories than that. That's not at somebody else's church. Look. Look, so, so. <laughs> y'all want some, y'all want some story? Tell me more, tell me more. Come on, where the grease at? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Y'all don't know that. <laughs> tell me. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all know about the beauty school dropout. Y'all don't know about that. Look, let me keep going. Look. You got now. You with me? Y'all on the 10 second delay. You with me? Okay, there you go. All right, there you go. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, I gotta go. I'm I'm one more time. Y'all. Right, yeah. Anyway, look. Can we just be? Let, let, let's read this together. As a local church, being is an organizational advantage, and that's true in the natural and in the spiritual. Because there are some places I won't spend my money. The food, some places I'll go because the food is just that good. But there are some places I won't go if you're rude and you're nasty. Some, pla I, some places I was wait in line to get a refund because I don't like how the person dealt with me. And I'm hungry and I want the food, but because you ain't going to make me spend my money like that, I'll stand there and well, I got go to get, go get the manager. Well, go get him then. Go get my money. Come on here. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Look, let me keep going. Look, look, look. John 13. John 13. John 13, 1 says, come on, sideline preach. Look what it says. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, I'm almost, I'm almost there. When his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, look at this, look at this. Having loved his own who were in the world. Here it is. I love this. He loved them to the end. Have, have you ever studied the life of the disciples? And see how messed up they were? Peter always putting his foot in his mouth. Come on, they're just always saying something, always talking, doubting Thomas. Come on, Judas, a devil. Come on, oh, I mean, have you ever looked at the lives of the disciples? 
But the Bible says that Jesus loved them to the, he loved them to the end. In, in order to love the way that God intends, my love must be steadfast. It's not based on how you act. My love should not be based on how you're dealing with me. But I am, if I'm going to love the way that God intends me to love, it, it, ought, to be, it ought to be steadfast. It ought, to be, it ought to be consistent. It ought to be to the point to where I love you in spite of you. I, I'm going to get to the point in my walk with God to where you can't make me hate you. Go ahead and try. You can't make me hate you. I, I, you're trying to do all. Anybody ever have that season in my life? Do I have people in my life that just want to antagonize me? That just want to make my life a living? You know what? Come on, just wanted to hurt me. Just wanted to see me angry. They just poke and poke and poke. But you got to grow up and get to the point that where either you're going to mature, that where you're going to say, I don't care how much you poke at me. I don't care how much you lie on me. I don't care whatever you say. I'm going to keep on loving you. Come on here, somebody. I wish chemistry was here. He'll tell you, I can't stop loving you, God. Girl, y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight. Y'all just, uh, I think, uh, uh, come on, y'all. I think about us. That's the same song. I don't know, but anyway, your love ought to be steadfast. Let me go to verse two. Boy, y'all, y'all, I gotta take this show on the road. Look at verse two. Immediately, see that was our song. That why you playing? Shoot, look here. Verse two says, during. That's why. That's why. That's why that, yes, sir. That's why. We, that's why we. <laughs> look, verse two says, during supper, when the devil had already put. Put it into his heart, into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going back to God. Look, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. He, he, he knows, one man of God says, he knew where he came from. He, he knew the power he possessed and he knew where he was headed. Jesus knew his purpose. He knew his purpose. He knew he had his mind on the cross. He knew why he came. But while he came, look what his disciples are doing. Verse, look at Luke 22, 24. Then they began to argue among themselves. This is the ending of his life. He's getting ready to go to the cross the next day. He's getting ready to die. He knows what he's about to do. But the people closest to him, instead of them being prayerful, instead of them pulling on the anointing and pulling and soaking up everything he said like a sponge, they arguing amongst themselves. Now, who will be the greatest among them? Verse 25, Jesus told them, in, the, in, the, in this world, the kings and great men lord over their people, yet they, call, yet they are called friends of the people. In other words, they're lording over, God's, over the people, and everybody love it. Verse 26, he says, but among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank. The leader should be like a servant. Oh man, we got it so backwards in the kingdom of God in this day and time that where the leaders, we, we, we sit over on the side and we want everybody to, to wait on us. We want everybody to do something for me. Instead of uh, the, the, the one that is the greatest. And I don't, that doesn't mean that the leader will always be in the ditch and always be doing this and doing that. No, Acts chapter 6 verse 4 kind of levels that out. Let me know I'm going to give myself over to the prayer and the ministry of the word so I can be prepared to do what God has called me to do. But at the same time, I should never, if, if serving, here it is, if serving is beneath you, leadership is beyond you. I can never get so high on the hall the way I don't serve. I, I can never get so high on the hall the way I can't pick up trash. I can't vacuum. I can't help do this or help doing that. No, my friend, Jesus said the greatest among you ought, ought, to, be, ought to be a servant. Look, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm getting there. Look at verse 4. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist. Look, they're there arguing because obviously the person who's supposed to be there that to wash their feet didn't show up he's not there and they're arguing I believe they're arguing with one another trying to say I'm not finna wash nobody's feet I'm, I'm, I'm not finna do that I ain't finna, do you see them you see Thomas toe jams I ain't finna I ain't finna, I ain't finna wash them feet and they're arguing amongst themselves on who's gonna wash their feet and the Bible said Jesus got up from the table took off his robe wrapped a towel around his waist Lord have mercy in order to love the way that God intends, I'm trying to give you the truth about love. My love must be a selfless love. My love can't be a what's in it for me type love. My love is not contingent upon what you give me back. Who is Je Jesus took off his robe. 
and selflessly wrapped himself in a towel around his waist. It reminds me so much of Philippians 2, 5, because Jesus is our ultimate example. Verse 5 says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Am I boring y'all? Am I boring y'all? <laughs> Ain't nobody said nothing over here. Look, verse 6 says, who, who, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be granted. In other words, he was he was in the form of God, but he didn't hold on to his Godness to say, no, I'm God. I can't do this. No, but verse 7 says he emptied himself. The Kenoso. He emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of man. Here it is. Verse 8 says, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death <clears throat> on a cross. The, the love that God wants us to exemplify is a selfless love. You know why, you know why our church sometimes isn't showing love, <clears throat> isn't welcoming, isn't nice? Uh, it's because we refuse to die. It's too much a me living. I'm too important. This how I am. I don't care what nobody say. Pastor, you can preach on tithing till the cows come home. You better tell the Lord, thank you for these five dollars. Come on. And, and there are some people that are stuck like that. They don't care what is said, how we say it. They're going to be stuck on what they're doing. And you know why? Because we have not died. And here all of us have a cross. All, Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, he said, you got to come after me and take up your cross. You got to take up your cross. And Jesus humbled himself, and died. And the love that God wants me to, to exemplify is a selfless love. Oh, man, I got to go. Verse 5, back to John 13, 5. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Lord, I mean, look at Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending, married baby, God's son, the root of Jesse, oh, the offspring of, of Abraham. Look at Jesus. He cut up, emptied himself, took off his, his robe, and, and gra gra grabbed a towel and began to wash the disciples' feet. He began to serve them in, in order <laughs> to love the way that God intends. My love must be a, a serving love. Do you know that you really are serving when you're loving? Because my love is evangelistic. My love is, is, is magnetic. I just said that. My love, it, it pulls people to Christ. So it is really a serving love. Look, look, Jesus again, verse, verse Philippians 2, 7 says he emptied himself by taking the form of a what? Servant. He took on the form of a servant. And here Jesus was a servant, is a servant. He's still serving us now. Hebrews 7.25 says he at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. He's still serving us now. And now here it is. I can't serve. Look at this quote. I love this. The difference between choosing to serve and choosing to be a servant. When I choose to serve, I retain control about who I serve and when I serve. But when I choose to be a servant, I have given up all rights and all control. That's the difference between choosing to serve and being a servant. My highest spiritual gift, I've told y'all this, is service. I'm a servant, and I don't pick and choose. Oh, you don't go to truth and love? I'm not going to help you. Oh, you you this? Oh, you not. No, I serve. That's who I am. That's my highest spiritual gift. That's what I do. And so when you're a servant... You don't pick and choose. There's some people that only pick up a broom when they know the pastor here. Oh, here he come. Come on, somebody. Y'all know y'all know that. There's some people that only wait for somebody to be seeing them and somebody to be. Come on, somebody. What, what am I saying? It's not about choosing when I do what I do, but it's about being who it is that God has called me to be. I am a servant, and we serve one another through the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 says, whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many things? Everything. everything. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 
This is why we serve the way we serve. This is why we do what we do. This is why we love the way we love. Because God told me, I don't, I don't base my serving based off of my compensation. Some people only serve when it's something in it for them. I don't base my serving based off of, well, I ain't getting paid for this. Well, this ain't my job. Well, I ain't the pastor. Let the preachers do it. Let the, oh, come on. Y'all are acting like this is people online again. Y'all like y'all know nobody like. No, I don't base my service to God or to the kingdom of God based off of what I can get out of it. My Bible tells me whatever I do, I do it for the glory of God. Because when man don't reward me and when man don't pat me on the back, can I tell you that God never forgets me. And he says he's faithful and just to remember, remember everything, everything that I did. So, so the truth in love way, I'm telling you what I told you already. The truth in love way is that our dream team is our folk that work in ministry know that serving in ministry matters. Yes, sir. That's why I choose to serve. I don't have to serve, but I choose to do it. I choose because it's my most reasonable serve because what I do, it really matters. I want to get you this in your heart. That's why I keep going to it. I got plenty more sermons I can preach. I got plenty more Bible I can study and I can give to you, but that's not what it's about. I'm trying to move this train forward. I'm trying to let us know that what God has done is not all that he want to do, but he wants to do exceeding and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. But as long as we got the same mindset we had last year and the year before that, we're going to keep on circling around the same mouth. Oh, but I don't know about you, but I want everything that God has for me. So I know that what I do for the kingdom, it really, it really matters. Our lives will never be about Jesus if we keep making everything about ourselves. So Bob Goff says our lives will never be about Jesus. We, we quickly say it's all about Jesus. I deserve Jesus. G, 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 G. But when I make everything about myself, do you do anything that you don't get some out of it? Do you only go pick people up when they can give you gas money? Do you only loan people $20 when you know you don't get it back? Do you only help whenever it is it's going to benefit you or when somebody's going to pack you on the back or you want somebody to stand up and talk about how you did what you did? But no, as long as it's all the way about, always about me, it's never going to be about Jesus. Read, read Ephesians 2 when you get home. Let me speed up. In order to love the way that God intends, my serving must become a lifestyle rather than an isolated event. So, so many people serve at events when it's not a lifestyle. I don't wait to come up at outreach to serve. I'm always serving. Amen. I don't wait to come to an event <laughs> I don't wait to come when we doing something. No, my friend, it's as I go. Everywhere I do, everywhere I go, rather, everything I do is about, it's about serving. Oh, come on, that's some good stuff, y'all. It's not about an isolated event. It's about a what? A lifestyle. That's what he says. Let me, last thing, I believe it is. Yep, two more things. The truth and love way is that our dream teamers know that their, their what? Their presence matters. So oftentimes, man, we look and say, ah, it don't matter. It don't matter if I'm here. Nobody don't know. I ain't finna go. I'm tired. I ain't finna do that. I know I signed up, but I ain't finna do it. I know I told them I was going to be there. They'll be all right. They'll find somebody. If everybody had that mindset, how many souls would be one to the kingdom of God? If everybody had the mindset of saying somebody else going to do it, Somebody else going to pick it up. Somebody else going to serve. Where in the world would we be at? But I have to know that I matter. It's not about what I do, what somebody else do, rather, but it's about my presence. Lastly, I love y'all. The truth and love way is that our dream team, most people who serve in ministry know that they're, they're what? Faithfulness. The faithfulness matters. What a shame it is for us to be such high achievers on our jobs. Some of us got more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> Some of us are going to school and school and school and school and graduate and graduate and graduate and then go. You go into our offices at work. We got all these certificates and all these plaques and all these all these employee of the month and employee of the year. They give us our own little parking space. We get a plaque. We got all this stuff. But then when it comes to working or serving in the house of God, we it's like pulling teeth to get us to do something. But I have to know. <laughs> That God is not allowing me to serve in the natural or to work in the natural for a paycheck. And then when it comes to him, 
I give him the aftermath. I just give him what's left over. You know, if anything, I'm to fix my life and fix my schedule, just my schedule where I'm giving God the very best that I have all of the time. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise.